Taiwan's president expresses her thanks to the men and women keeping the country safe. Taiwan's ambassadors sprang into action after Pelosi's visit and China's military exercises. We look at what they've been saying to the international media. Taiwan plans a series of missile tests, possibly including missiles that could hit China. China banned more agricultural and aquacultural products from Taiwan, but some business people are taking the economic crisis as an opportunity to positive changes. A warm welcome to Taiwan Plus News. I'm Leslie Liao. Taiwan's president thanked the nation's pilots for safeguarding the island during a visit to the country's Air Force Command. In a military briefing, Tsai Ing-wen expressed her gratitude to the Air Force for its round-the-clock protection of the nation's skies. The defense forces have been on high alert as China conducted extended military exercises in response to a visit to Taipei by U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The live fire military drills around the island officially ended on Wednesday. Tsai reaffirmed that Taiwan would remain vigilant and would not back down in defending the country's sovereignty. Although Beijing announced an official end to its military drills around the island earlier this week, there are still Chinese warships and fighter jets in the area, according to Taiwan's defense ministry. Our reporter Jaime Okan spoke to Kitch Liao, a military consultant with DoubleThink Lab in Taipei, to find out more. But what do you think will change going forward in terms of Chinese military presence in the Taiwan Strait? I don't see like a huge difference in terms of like the future presence. Uh, one salient point might be that the Chinese would actually start conducting their own freedom of uh, navigation operations, FANA. Uh, because one salient point during this entire exercise is that Chinese destroyers actually close within territorial waters of Taiwan. Now, this is actually allowed under international uh, law. However, this is generally considered to be rather provocative, especially in the context of Taiwan Strait. Now, in terms of the new normal, um, what, what Taiwanese Ministry of Defense and Japanese General Staff done is actually pretty brilliant because they've routinized this. They put information on website and do not just hold press conferences every time there's an incursion. And, you know, to, to such extent, it's actually very effective in countering what the Chinese were doing, which is psychological and opinion warfare in accordance with their three warfare principles. The U.S. said that it will continue to sail uh, warships on the basis of freedom of navigation. And we could see a transit to the Taiwan Strait in the next coming weeks. Some experts are saying that an aircraft carrier through the strait might be too provocative, but can you kind of explain where this red line is? This entire Chinese exercise is best understood uh, as a uh, face-saving exercise uh, for the Chinese Communist Party. Because Pelosi landed in Taiwan, therefore they have to respond, but they do not really want to. Any response on the U.S. side should be commensurate with that. And if we consider the status quo, what the U.S. has been doing in terms of fun up, um, you don't usually send a carrier unless, you know, there's extraordinary events. And that's, I believe, why they set a cap as to we do not want to send a carrier to further provoke the Chinese at this point. This also coincides with what, the, what some of the Chinese, uh, sorry, some of the U.S. officials were talking before that they do not believe that the Chinese intend to launch a full invasion at this time. Diplomats from Taiwan sprang into action last week, sharing the country's perspective with global media. That was after a high-profile visit from the U.S. government and a military response from China. Our reporter Eric Gao has more. It's not every day that Taiwan takes top billing in the international media. But when U.S. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi arrived in the highest level visit in two and a half decades, all eyes were on the country. China's large-scale live-fire military exercises in nearby waters in reaction to Pelosi's visit pushed Taiwan even further up the news agenda. With many countries eager to hear Taiwan's perspective, ambassadors around the world appeared on international media with their take on the events. Taipei's envoy to Washington, Xiaobi Kim, described Pelosi's visit as a strong show of friendship. 
despite all challenges, um, we have friends in the international community who will stand with us. And uh, we are learning that we have to be better prepared. Uh, we have to be stronger in our own uh, self-defenses. Uh, we have to work um, hard to galvanize uh, international support in working to deter that tragic scenario from ever happening. Across the Atlantic, Kelly Xie, Taiwan's representative in London, had strong words for China's military posturing. It's actually a, a blatant attempt to change the status quo across Taiwan Strait by force and unilaterally. Taiwan's ambassador to Belgium and to the EU as a whole, Tsai Ming-yen, also denounced China's actions. And that um, not only threatens Taiwan's security, but also jeopardize the stability and the peace of the entire region. So we uh, condemn strongly about that kind of aggressive military activity conducted by the Chinese government. Representative Wu Zizong in France urged people not to buy into Beijing's narrative about Taiwan. Et je dois rappeler encore une fois, si on continue à soutenir cette Chine en disant que Taiwan ne fait partir, on est en train de laisser la Chine faire tout ce qu'elle veut sur Taiwan, c'est-à-dire dans le futur, de lui permettre de faire la guerre contre Taiwan. And over in Italy, Representative Andrea Lee stressed that Taiwan and China are separate. Je dis que, dépend de la status quo, et que Taiwan et China, nessuno controlla o ha misteriato. Dobbiamo pure rispettare questa differenza eh, per la, una pacifica convivenza. La situazione è molto complicata. Vogliamo la riduzione di tensione, però anche Cina deve sapere che non possono attivare le regole del mondo. Le regole sono fatte in modo delle regole. And in Germany, Representative Xie Zuwei told local media that Taiwan will not be provoked or intimidated. I reached out to Xie to ask him if this international media blitz by Taiwan's envoys is par for the course or an unprecedented push. This is something new because uh, in the last years, Taiwan has already uh, achieved quite interest from the media here. There has never been such a big, such a big interest and concern about the security, stability of Taiwan, security in the uh, Taiwan Street. Well, not only in the Taiwan Street, but also in the South China Sea. How are people in Germany responding to Nancy Pelosi's visit and the Chinese military drills that followed? People were very, very concerned about the security there, the stability there. And most of them are supportive toward Taiwan because they have known Taiwan is a democracy which has overcome uh, decades of uh, dictatorship, and it wasn't easy for Taiwanese people to have less democracy. So they all are supporting us. And what what the Chinese the, the Chinese government have been done in terms of uh, shutting uh, records towards Taiwan, they were all very angry. They said the Chinese government should not have to do that, and they condemned the Chinese government. So has there been any change in attitude among uh, Germany's government towards either Taiwan or China since these events have happened? I think I can say that the, the attitude of the new government has already changed toward Taiwan uh, because they know that Taiwan uh, is standing uh, alongside the world of the freedom especially after the invasion war of this Russia against the Ukraine, they have learned a lesson and they said, we, all of the, all of this, the democracy countries, they should stand to each other, no matter where they are, in, in Europe, in Asia. So has this affected the willingness of any German officials to come visit Taiwan themselves? There has always been, uh, always uh, visitors from the government, of course not, not the minister, but under minister, there has been always visitors. And especially in this moment, a lot of MPs, they said, we will, we will visit, visit Taiwan. We just want to visit Taiwan to show our solidarity to them. Taiwan's president Tsai Ing-wen has accepted the credentials of Paraguay's new ambassador to the country. Carlos Jose Fleitas Rodriguez met with the president on Thursday. He has served twice in Taiwan before, 
President Tsai said the two countries have enjoyed 65 years of friendship, adding that Paraguay's president has spoken up for Taiwan at multiple international events. Paraguay is one of Taiwan's 14 remaining diplomatic allies. Taiwan is set to test fire missiles off its east coast in the coming weeks. Chinese surveillance ships have been passing through the area, but experts say there's little risk of military secrets getting out. John Van Trieste has more. The skies over Taiwan aren't usually aglow with missile fire, but these scenes from a previous test will be repeated sometime in the next few weeks. Taiwan's state-run arms maker has picked six days during that period for testing some of its wares. There's no word on what kind of missiles will be fired, but experts say there are two likely candidates. One is the Skybo-3, an anti-aircraft missile with a range of 200 kilometers. Then there's the Xiongfeng 2 e capable of hitting much of China. Chinese surveillance ships have been maneuvering off the east coast following four days of military drills. On Thursday, four Chinese ships were in the area. Still, experts think Taiwan's missile technology is safe from prying eyes. To be sure, Taiwan will close a stretch of sea off its east coast during the testing. Another sign from officials that they will do all they can to defend the nation's sovereignty. Patrick Chen and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's Central Weather Bureau says more flooding is possible in southern Taiwan after two days of rain inundated several districts in Kaohsiung. Floodwaters had receded in parts of the city after nearly 126 millimeters of rain fell in just over three hours. Streets were submerged and people were forced to dismount from their vehicles amid the downpour. More rain is now expected over the weekend. China has officially ended its military drills around Taiwan. But economic sanctions imposed by Beijing after the visit of U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi remain in effect. Citrus fruits, horse mackerel and white hair tail fish have joined a long list of products banned by China for import. As Yu Jinghuang found out, some are trying to look at the crisis through a positive lens. The busiest port in northern Taiwan appears to be back to normal. These fishermen couldn't work for several days as China conducted military drills in waters around the island. With the drills now over, the fishermen have managed a large catch, but they have a fresh concern. Most of the white hair tail caught here is sold to China, which has just banned the import of the fish. China has also banned pomelos from Taiwan. It is estimated that the latest Chinese ban will affect between 4,500 to 5,500 tons of white hair tail and horse mackerel and around 8,000 tons of citrus fruits. To help the situation, the government plans to promote domestic sales, encourage freezing or byproducts, and expand into other international markets. Some local farmers' associations have already started to purchase fruits from smallholder farms. Take pomelos for an example. Bigger ones that are less tasty will now be turned into soaps, essential oil, or other products to increase their economic potential, which will make a difference in the bottom line of many farmers. Taiwan 
looking at markets beyond an unreliable trade partner may ease the economic fallout for Taiwan's agricultural and aquaculture industries. But the biggest fear for many here is that drills by the Chinese military become more frequent. For those in business, it's second nature not to put all the proverbial eggs in one basket. So China's ban will only push Taiwan to find other markets for its products. Of greater concern is the safety of its people and finding a solution to keep tensions from escalating further. Klein Wang and Eugene Huang for Taiwan Plus. The ruling Democratic Progressive Party's candidate for mayor of Taoyuan has withdrawn from the race following an accusation of plagiarism. Earlier this week, Ling Zijian said he would press on with his campaign after a review board at National Taiwan University withdrew his master's degree because of plagiarism. But at a press conference this afternoon, Lin said he is withdrawing out of concern for how the controversy might affect the November elections. He said he will continue to try and clear his name. He is set to be replaced by one of the DPP's lawmakers in Taoyuan, Zhen Yunpeng. Coming up here on Taiwan Plus, Jilong, the northern city of Taiwan, lit up with floats and lanterns to celebrate the ghost month. According to CNN, of a survey I've done of 40 of the foods that you need to eat in Taiwan, row fine or braised pork rice is at the very top. This is the number one thing. 15 US dollars. 16 US dollars. 18 US dollars. Wait, what? Huh? Wait, did we get the wrong card? No, don't waste your money. Just go and eat, eat local. what local people okay. eat. Jason's table shocked and surprised is now available on Taiwan Plus. In a changing world, when voices are being silenced, Taiwan Plus is listening. We tell those stories. No compromise. No boundaries. People in Taiwan. No fear. Oh, I'm Ryan Hillcoat-Patrick. Capital Taipei. Taiwan Plus. Taiwan Plus News. Welcome back. You're watching Taiwan Plus News. Now for some of the top stories from around the world. The United Nations has called for a stop to military activity around Europe's largest nuclear power plant in southern Ukraine. Russia and Ukraine are blaming each other for renewed shelling around the Zaporizhia plant. The area was struck five times on Thursday, close to where radioactive materials are stored, according to Ukraine's nuclear agency. Russian forces seized the plant in March, but it is operated by Ukrainian staff. UN chief Antonio Guterres is calling for a demilitarized zone to prevent a disaster. China and South Korea have clashed over an advanced missile defense system in an exchange of comments that could further harm long-standing security differences. The disagreement is over the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, or THAAD, system, which South Korea installed in 2016, saying it is part of its self-defense. Beijing is demanding that Seoul not deploy any more batteries and limit the use of existing ones because it poses a threat to its strategic security. But Seoul says the THAAD system is not up for negotiation. It is indicated that it plans to abandon agreements made by the previous government that included a commitment to not participate in a U.S.-led global missile shield. China's recent military drills around Taiwan have raised fears that Beijing is preparing for an invasion, and there is much talk in the U.S. capital about what that could look like. A Washington think tank is hosting war game scenarios in which China has decided to attack Taiwan and the United States comes to its aid. 
players are retired senior military officers, think tank staff and former government officials. It's the only such Taiwan war game that's in the public domain. Taiwan Plus reporter Louise Watts spoke to one of the designers of the war games. Mark Kansian is a retired colonel in the U.S. Marines and now a senior advisor with the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C. There's been 18 of the 22 games so far. Could you talk a little about what scenarios have you been running and what have the results been? Our war game is set in 2026. Uh, that's the end of the Pentagon's planning period. And it's also a, a date that a lot of people have focused on as a, a time when uh, the Chinese might be strong enough to attack Taiwan. Um, this is really the only war game that's out there in the public domain. What we've seen in these 18 iterations is that the United States and Taiwan and often Japan can prevail. That is, they are able to sustain an autonomous Taiwan that is not occupied uh, by China. On the other hand, they're able to do this at great cost. Uh, the forces are badly chewed up. Uh, the United States, for example, loses hundreds of aircraft, often over 500 aircraft and two aircraft carriers. Uh, the Taiwanese economy is devastated. Uh, so uh, in the end, we argue that the United States needs to make better preparations in order to de deter the Chinese and end the war more quickly. What have you learned about the capabilities of Taiwanese armed forces to repel a Chinese attack? There are a couple of insights that are emerging. Uh, one is the importance of the Taiwanese ground forces. Uh, in all of our simulations, the Chinese are able to get ashore. It's impossible uh, to stop them uh, on the beach. But the strength of Taiwanese combat forces can uh, isolate them on the, on the beach while uh, air and naval forces attrite the Chinese amphibious fleet. And ultimately, often uh, the Chinese forces are isolated and can't move. The importance of some asymmetric capabilities like anti-ship missiles is very important. Some capabilities like surface ships are much less valuable because of their vulnerability to, uh, to the Chinese. So the Taiwanese are not gonna be able to uh, field a, a standard military, if you will, as they've done in the past, an asymmetric military is, uh, would be much more effective in uh, repelling a Chinese attack. The 2022 edition of Asia's largest cultural and creative event, Creative Expo Taiwan, is being held in the southern city of Kaohsiung for the first time ever. Here's a quick rundown of what visitors can expect. With the theme of Resonance Island, the expo brings together Taiwanese brands to showcase local innovation. The main focus is on immersive experiences. Some of the most popular booths have visitors remotely interacting with businesses, business owners and artists. The venue is huge with two exhibition areas extending over both the Kaohsiung Pop Music Center and Kaohsiung Exhibition Center. The event curator says the expo aims to make Taiwan's culture available to everyone. During this year's Ghost Month, visitors have swarmed to Jilong, a port city located on Taiwan's north coast, to once again pay their respects to the spirit world. Our reporter Sandy Chi takes us there. It's the seventh month on the lunar calendar, and for Taoists and Buddhists, this is when the gates of hell open and hungry ghosts roam the earth, searching for food, money and entertainment. It may seem similar to Halloween or perhaps Mexico's Day of the Dead, but here in Taiwan, the events last for a whole month and many cities have their own unique rituals. Thousands of people have descended on the city of Jilong. As you can see over here, it looks like a carnival, but it's actually a parade for the Ghost Month. After a two-year hiatus, this parade, this festival, is back in action. This parade has been held for generations, and each of the floats here are decorated by a different family, symbolizing family unity and power. The floats are a Ghost Month highlight. 
Yeah, I'm coming here every year because I'm local people. This event aims is to help religious people feel more confident about themselves. Oh, 太棒了！我没有看过这么热闹的的一个中原祭。Then before midnight along the city's northern shore, one of the ghost month's most iconic and beautiful festivals unfolds. Water lanterns are released, in a tradition that began in 1853 during the Qing dynasty. They're meant to light the way for those who lost their lives at sea, attracting their souls back to land to enjoy the offerings. It is also believed that the lanterns guide the spirits of deceased family members to reincarnation. This lantern belongs to the Huang family, it took them more than half a month to prepare, and it's bigger and brighter than their previous offerings. It's a tradition the families here cherish, and each lantern sets sail with their hopes for luck and prosperity for all. Kama Shu and Sandy Chi for Taiwan Plus. Thanks for watching Taiwan Plus News. I'm Leslie Liao. Finally, we leave you with images of the all-women dirt bike rider team in Dubai preparing for the next season starting in September. For more stories from Taiwan and around the world, please download the Taiwan Plus app. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.